Shoes are one of the accessories that you kinda have to learn how to model as a 3D artist since most 3D characters wear some kind of shoe. Most shoes have the same components you see in this shoe, so I would follow more or less the same process I used here to create any kind of shoe, regardless of its design complexities. So let's jump right in. So first, I'm gonna import these two diagram references I made by looking at various shoe images and choose the top few one. Overlay and opacity set to 20%. In this stage, my goal is to make the two main big shapes, the sole and the big upper part. So for the sole, add a plane, lower the division, and now I'm stretching the plane to match the general area of the sole. Now I'm using the move brush to match the reference following the outlines. Then assign a new face group to the sole area and separate the two face groups. Then select the outside face group and delete it. Now there is only the sole area remaining. Now I'm gonna subdivide it once for more resolution and use the move brush to match the reference more accurately. Once I'm happy with the shape, I'm gonna delete lower and then quad remesh. I'm setting the quad count to 300 and then remesh. This way I get a clean and even topology. In the side view reference, the sole has thickness. To add that thickness, I'm gonna mask the entire object and extract with thickness. Then just delete the plane. Now I'm masking these two edge loops. Invert and then sliding them near the edges with scale tool. This way the edges of the sole will remain sharp when I subdivide it later. Then I'm gonna mask this area adjust the gizmo position, rotate and do it a few times until it matches the reference. That's how I made that curve. Now subdivide and the sole is ready. Now I'm gonna add a sphere, set the post subdivision to 3. Then mask the top half and flatten the lower half using the scale. Now just grab the move brush and try to match the reference in the side view. Notice the brush size, it's pretty big. Then switch to the top reference and go to the top view and match it as closely as I can. It's already starting to look like a shoe, even though the shape is pretty rough. Then I'm adjusting the shape a bit more. The polygons here are too stressed, so I'm gonna subdivide and quadrumesh to get even, nice topology. Then I'm assigning a face group to the bottom part like this. Then hide and delete the face group. Doing the same for this opening. Hide and delete. Trying to match this area with the reference. Now 
I'm gonna quadrimesh again. In the final result, you can see that this part is made of three pieces and they fit together kind of like puzzle pieces. For that, I'm going to name it upper piece one and then clone it two times. Name them upper piece two and three. Then hide the two and three. Then I'm going to add a face group to this area. Then hide this group and delete. Now I'm adjusting the shape, especially the edges and corners with the smooth brush and the relax is enabled. Then mask and extract with thickness. Then subdivide and the first piece is ready. Now let's unhide the second piece and assign a face group like this. Then hide the other face group and delete. Then adjust the corners with the smooth and relax and quadrimus for clean topology. So unhide piece 3 and draw face group like this. This piece is going to be the tongue of the shoe. Now I'm gonna hide this face group and delete. And like before, make the corners rounded using smooth and relax. Let's apply a different matte cap for better visibility of this piece and sort of push it under piece number two using the move brush. Now to create these holes, I'm going to assign one face group to these faces like this. Then hide, invert and delete the hidden face groups. Then just subdivide and it will automatically make the holes round. And then mask. And extract with thickness. And subdivide it once more. Then quadrimesh this piece for clean topology and add thickness by mask extraction. Then subdivide it a couple of times and adjust its shape using move brush like this. All the major pieces are ready. Now it's time for detailing. Now before we actually start the detailing, I went ahead and drew these face groups and they will come in handy. You will see in a moment why. Now I'm going to make these eyelets using the lathe tool. Turn on grid and draw this shape. Disable cap and then to flip the normals, I'm going to go over here and check inverse culling, then subdivide. Scale it down. Clone and reposition them properly. Select and group them and clone that group to the other side and reposition them. I'm going to select the tube tool and draw this crisscross line for the shoeless. Add extra points to the corners like this and then enable closed. 
lower the division a little bit and then start to add points and adjust the position of the shoelace. Then change its profile shape to this since the shoelace is flat. Some areas are vertical so enable twist and turn those areas by dragging the pink handles like this. Then subdivide and adjust the shapes with the move brush. Now for the knot, I'm drawing this number 8 type shape with the tube tool. They cross in the middle. Then reposition them. and change the profile shape to rectangle to flatten it and scale down the ends with the radius then subdivide add tube enable hole and scale it down then adjust it with the move brush and subdivide and our shoeless is ready now I'm gonna select the flatten brush and add bevel manually. And smooth. Then mask this face group and in the operation menu inflate to make the raised part in front. Then I'm gonna smooth out this area a little bit and inflate to create the soft padded effect. Then draw these lines using crease brush. For the sole, I'm gonna mask this area using face group, grab the clay brush, select pattern 8 as alpha. Rotate it 90 degrees. And scale and click on paint all plus tri planner. Then smooth it out a little bit. Then set the layers offset value to around minus 50. I'm gonna use these lines as base for the stitches. Use lazy rope stabilizer for smooth lines. Now for the pull tab, I'm drawing this shape using the tube tool and change the profile to rectangle shape the same way I did the shoelace. Adjust its shape a little bit and then for the logo I'm gonna draw a face group. Mask the face group and extract with thickness like this. Now I'm gonna switch to PBR, add a light, and then add a plane and name it floor. Now go to material, select shadow catcher. This way only the shadow will remain while the floor is invisible. Pretty cool. Okay, so for the surface textures, I prepared these two procedural fabric textures in Blender. And let me quickly show you how I made this leather texture in Procreate. Select a square canvas, Choose a dark color. Go to the brush, scroll down to materials and select old skin. And paint the canvas with this brush until it looks like this. Then simply export as PNG. And save image. 
Back in Nomad, select this piece. Now I'm gonna add a layer and select this leather texture as alpha. Make sure the clay brush is selected when you do this. Now try planar and paint all. Go to layer, offset and adjust the intensity like this. Do the same with these two pieces. Now for the shoelace, I'm gonna choose this procedural fabric alpha and apply it using the same technique as the leather. You can scale it down and adjust its intensity. I wanna apply a fabric texture here, so I have masked the rest of the area and now I'm erasing the leather texture using the delete layer. Then apply this fabric alpha. Now it's time to add color. For that I'm gonna choose a brown leather color and paint all on a new layer. Apply the same color to these leather pieces as well. Choose this warm orange color for the logo. Select all the eyelets and apply a metal material like this. And then I'm gonna pick a slightly warm off-white color for the shoelace. Cooler orange color for the sole. I changed my mind so I'm using the operation menu's exposure slider to change the value. Now I'm adding some roughness with the paint brush on a new layer. Then I'm introducing some color variation to make it look more natural. You can watch the in-depth tutorial I made to learn how to use the stitch brushes I made. Now pick a bright color for the thread and start drawing stitches on a new layer like this. I'm using the lazy rope stabilizer for these brushes in order to avoid wobbly inconsistent lines. So I've already made tutorials on most of the tools I've used throughout this project. So make sure to check out this playlist for that and subscribe if you found it useful and I will see you in the next video.